This video is dedicated to the physics layers and masks in Godot. It's a quick tip based on a demo that's been made by James, who's now working with us. He's got a tutorial channel, he's a teacher, and he covers Godot, Unity, Game Maker, link in the description. So, we have a tutorial that he's working on, which is focusing on Area 2D, showing you ways to use Area 2D to, without connecting hard coding interactions in your game, interact with different objects, have a character uh, bump into spikes, those kinds of things. And so one common way to handle the bump is, for example, in your coin scene, the coin is an area 2D with the body entered signal connected to it. So when a um, body connects to it, when a, a character kinematic body enters the area, it's going to emit that signal and call back its on body entered method. That's the one it's connected to now. And in the code, all we are doing is queuing free here. But one thing I've commonly seen is saying you ensure that the body um, is in group and a group like player, for instance, and you use that to check that the body that collided with the coin so that hit this blue rectangle here is the player. Uh, it's not the way to do it, right? There's a much more elegant and reliable way. The problem with, with using this approach, checking that the body is in a group, is what if someone removes the tag on the player? Uh, I should mention as well, going to the player scene, what a group is. A group is when you go to the right side of the interface, to the node tab, and to the groups sub tab, you can add tags to the selected nodes in the scene tree on the left. So if I go back to the groups, I can add one called player and the player will be in the group player. The problem is this is a case sensitive string. So if you type player and you check for the group player with a capital P, they will not match. You can have errors like these. That's why instead to detect collisions and simplify your code, you want to use physics layers and physics masks. When you select a body or an area and go to the inspector, you have under the physics body 2D category, a collision tab. A given uh, node can be on a number of layers and mask other physics layers. So layers are the layers your character is on. I'm going to show you how to customize the names because yours might be like layer six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five here. And I'm going to remove the mask on this one. Mask is what this node, in this case, the player kinematic body 2D will detect. The player in this case will detect nothing. If you want it to walk on the ground, you have a ground layer in your game, you would check the corresponding layer. Here. And note that you can also click on the boxes if you know which box corresponds to which layer. Um, so the layer you want it maybe to, uh, this is the kinematic body 2D, so the masks I'm going to put in there are going to be the elements that the player cannot go through. So for example, you could have obstacles. Now on the coin, if you want the coin to delete itself, to disappear, or to play a sound and animation when the player touches it, what you want to do is select that area 2D. You don't want to put it on any layer. You don't need the player or any other object in the game to detect it. So you put it on no collision layer. However, you put the first mask to it, the player layer in this case. This means that this node will only detect what is on the player layer. In this case, the player. So when you connect to the body entered signal, the only body that can trigger that signal is going to be the player. This is why in this example, I can remove the line to check whether the body that has collated is the player and directly call the Q3 method safely. 
I'm going to show you how to set the layers. So you go to the project menu, project settings, and you go down to the physics layer. 2D physics, the 3D ones are separate and it's under the layer name category. You can also search for um, physics and you will find the 2D physics category quickly this way. Once you enter it, all you have to do is click on the box next to one of the layers and type the name you want for the layer. For example, if I have world or ground in here, I can close, go back to the inspector, any node that has these collision layers, when I expand the list, I'm going to have ground instead of layer six now. One last thing, you might have cases where you select, for example, that coin node, and on the player layer, or on the, the things that should kill the coin, you might have some things like uh, bullets or weapons that can delete the items just like the player. So you might have two different layers. Um, you can create that, let's say it's going to mask spikes. Imagine that spikes is a bullet shot from a gun or an arrow from a bow or a bomb, something like that. And in this case, now there are different objects that can trigger the signal. In this case, you don't have to use the group. You can do a few things. Because you know that the body is of the type physics body 2D, uh, I'm going to control click on it, you will see that you have access to the collision layer and mask properties, and you have some methods to get bits on that. You can check which layers the um, node is on. So that's one way to check, for example, if this is the player. You know that player is the first physics layer, so on body, you can call the get physics, what is it, get collision layer bit here, and you will uh, enter zero for the first one. You'd have to test it, I think it should work with zero. So if body um, dot get collision layer bit zero returns uh, one or true, let's check the, the return type here. It's going to return true, it's a Boolean here. So if it returns true, you're going to Q3 and you can do something else. You can uh, um, emit a signal, like emit signal uh, player touched or something like that to update the score, for example, in the game or to update the count of coins. Although you might want to do that from the player, maybe. So that's one way to do it. Another way is to use type checks. So you're going to create a constant most of the time. Let's call it player because it's going to represent the player type. Then I'm going to use the preload statement to load, to preload in this case, the player. So I'm going to go to the file system, look for player.gd, drag and drop that there. It's going to give me the path. And when you do that, you can then use the is keyword in GDScript to check the type of a, an object. So I can say if body is player, it's going to check against my player variable. So it's going to check that the player extends that play.gd script. And in that case, you can have some code that is dedicated to the player. These are two methods I recommend. The group one can work just try to know about the alternatives and weigh the pros and cons of each. I think that type checks is going to be the most accurate and the least error prone. You can change the player and all, as long as you don't change the script, it's going to work. And note one last thing with the type check here, I could remove that and register the player type globally in Godot. For that, I have to go to the player script. And if you are using Godot 3.1 or a more recent version, you can use the class name keyword, class underscore name, and call it player. You save, this is going to register this script as a node you can add in the scene tree. So now I can type player, I should find it here under kinematic body 2D from player.gd. And you will have it 
from coin here, you can do a type check with that. So you might have to close the script and reopen it, or you might have to close and reopen the editor. And in this case, just reopening the script is enough so that it gets checked again by the engine. But that's how you can do type checks in Godot. That's it for this video. You can find a link to the project and to James' tutorial in the video description. He's going to be uh, doing tutorials for GDQuest now. Uh, but that said, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.